everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to be creating a painting from one of my photos I took while we were on vacation at Acadia National Park it's such a beautiful exquisitely beautiful place to visit if you've never been there and I just love painting photos from my vacation I can't always paint on location because you're with family or you know we we're hiking with the dogs and everything so um, I love taking a lot of photos and bringing them back to my studio and painting them there. So right now I drew in my, my sketch and it is overlooking the water and the rocks from the loop area that you drive around the loop at Acadia National Park. And I wet in the sky area and I'm using a cerulean light blue in my Lucas paint palette and I'm just it's an overcast day, so the clouds were kind of heavy with the sun, the, not the sun, but the sky peeking through some overcast clouds. So when you're painting with watercolor, when you add a wet wash like that, it was su super wet and the paint will just spread. So as it's starting to dry and the sheen is going down on it, I'm going to add some more color to it to give the feeling of the sky peeking through the clouds and the edges will be soft but you you know it's a little bit more defined this way I did the same thing with the water area but I added a little bit of a cooler blue so the sky blue is more of a cerulean blue and the ocean is more of an ultramarine type blue, maybe with a little bit of cerulean in it as well. So it's, it's gonna blend together nicely. It's gonna be very cohesive. So I did the same thing I did with the sky. I wet it, I added my base coat of paint, and then I'm just gonna go in and add some streaks. And you can see here that my sky is still wet, but it's drying a little bit. So I just wanna add some more peaks where the clouds might be revealing the blue sky behind it. I'm going to start painting the rock area and it's going to be like a, um, I have a yellow ochre there and an Indian red and some of my thalo blue color. I'm going to try to mix these colors together to make the rock formations and um, I feel like there's a lot of different colors in the rock so we're just going to um, wet the area like we did before. There's a lot of wet on wet here and then a lot of dry strokes as well in this painting. I'm putting some clean color down of that yellow ochre and then I'm making some streaks the way I feel the rock formations are. So over in Acadia National Park, you can see the rocks are just everywhere along the coast. They're smooth and they have cracks in them from where the rain and the erosion goes through. They're just so beautiful and um, I want to capture that feeling of just that smooth there's such just like such opposites there you have like rock formations against smooth sea and the clouds it's just so peaceful and um, I just want to capture that beauty that I found there I'm adding some blue to the rock here because I noticed that a lot of the rocks do have some blue in them 
Uh, maybe it's a little reflection from the sky. Maybe it's a different type of rock. I don't know, but um, I'm just adding those streaks and they're blending because this is pretty wet. And the more you work with watercolor, the more you realize how it behaves and how your paint behaves and how your paper is working for you. And you just sort of instinctively, um, through muscle memory and memory, realize how it's going to work. So I know that this is gonna blend a lot more than you see here, and we'll keep going back and adding more or less to the painting. For this background mountain area, I want that color to be like a grayish blue. So I'm mixing a little bit of, I think that's a phthalo blue there with a, a little bit of my um, Payne's gray. And it's making a lovely grayish blue. I'm adding a little cerulean to it. And I'm bringing it behind all of my trees here. So I'm just extending it, adding a little water. You won't be really able to see all of that when I put my trees in, but you still want that foundation there to shine through. So um, the mountain areas behind there, I'm adding some green to it and I'm extending it down all the way into my tree area just so we have a, uh, you know, a block of color behind the trees that we're gonna work on top of.
see area here has dried a lot but it was still somewhat wet so I went in with the tip of my brush and I added some of that same blue just a little bit darker to give some um, you know just a little idea of the waves and the, the motion of the water so closer to your viewpoint it'll be lo bigger lines and as you go further away there's little to none or very tiny I'm starting to paint in this foreground tree and it's very worn and it's lost its leaves from the sea air and the wind and the beauty about the main landscape to me is this contrast there's so many contrasts in um, color and you know you see dead trees amongst beautiful living trees and you see you know a harsh sky against a, a beautiful calm sea it's just really amazingly beautiful it easier to use a rigger brush or one that's a long round brush that's you know maybe four or three to add branches to trees like this because you can make some beautiful calligraphy marks with it. Here I'm going to mix a lighter yellowish green 
to start painting in my pine trees that are you know on this landscape and you want to start with the lighter color always in when you're painting with watercolors and when you're getting down your base shapes so we're just going to keep making our marks I'm still using that same sort of long round brush because I feel like I can get tiny little marks and some broader strokes so as my paint is drying or after I lay down my initial lighter yellower wash I'm adding a little bit of a darker green on top just for some shading and some contrast and some interest and the bottom part of this where they're poking out over the mountains that's where you're going to have a lot of space but now that I'm going towards the rocks it's kind of dense kind of foliage there and other plants so I'm just going to fill that whole area in with a medium uh, green and I'm going to keep doing the same. I keep adding a little bit of red to my green to just you know make it more dark and break up the um, color a little bit. Uh, here I mixed it quite dark and I'm going to go back in and add some branches and some shading and I just keep working it till I'm happy with the way it looks. Always referring back to my photo. I'm doing the same process on the other side of that tree in the middle, that focal tree, and just the same exact process. So just put in your base color and then start adding darks to give it shadow and a little definition. So to the left I added a large tree that was closer to the foreground. It was quite a tall pine and it was just sticking out in that photo. So I did it the same way and I just used my, my kind of long round brush to create those brush strokes of the branches of that tree. And the background you hear my dog barking at the deer that are walking in my yard. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now for the rest of the painting, we're going to start tidying up everything. Um, we've got most of our base you know, image down and all of our shading. We're going to add some more definition to the rocks and we're going to add some more definition to the trees and we're just going to keep working this back and forth until we are finished. So one way to add texture to a rock or any formation that you want, I am I have very little water on my brush and it is, this is dry brushing. So you're putting very little water on your brush and you're using the side of your brush or very lightly touching the paper to just sort of scumble over the paper. You're not stamping it, you're just scumbling it and it's hitting the top fibers of the paper and creating a little texture. And I'm also going to um, take my paint and splatter some little dots on it so I'll cover up the top part with a piece of paper and I will dip my brush in some wet paint and I will find a nice brush to splatter some dots all over those rocks to help it look more like a rock texture.
Make sure your tree area is completely dry. I'm using some white gouache here and the same long round brush. And I'm just using white. And I could see there that my uh, trees, the green was not dry. So when I put my white down, it bled all over. So I just dabbed it off. And then I'm gonna go back when it's dry and add those beautiful branches in the dark green area of the trees. Here I'm adding some light green touches to the foreground of this little hedge area and adding some weeds growing out of the rocks. So I started with a light green color and I'm just going to go over and add some shadow marks on it. And it's just making it, you know, just a little bit more organic and not so harsh. So as I'm finishing up some of the details on this painting, and I, I am guilty of maybe sometimes overworking a painting because I want to keep working on it. So you have to somehow say, okay, I've, I'm done and come back to it another day and with some fresh eyes. But I just want to say thank you so much for watching my videos and I really enjoy making these for you. Um, please hit that subscribe button for notifications and please hit the like button. I appreciate it so much and I'll see you in the next video.